Hello there, sword friends. Today I'm going to tell you a little bit. This is a little show and tell about this Rick Barrett katana. And before I get into the spiel, uh, you should probably know I got this second hand actually in the condition that you see it in. And so it's a little bit of a mystery for me to tell you who did what on it uh, or who did the work. But that's not the important thing. The important thing is to show you how cool this sword is. Now, this re isn't going to be my conventional review. I'm not going to really review it. I'm just going to talk about some of the things that I see and what I like and what I don't. And uh, I'm not going to cut with it. I'm not also going to share any weapon dynamics information because it wouldn't be super useful. This blade is in Shirasaya and the dynamic characteristics will change when it gets a finished mount, which I've thought about doing several times. Now, I should also note I have the sword up for sale right now and uh, I'm, it's there because it's short. It's a 27 and a quarter inch blade and that just isn't long enough for me. Even though Habaki is a little longer and it sits in the hand like a 28 inch blade, it's still not, just not where I would, I would personally want it to be, but it's so pretty and so fun feeling that I've thought many times about sending it off to the mystery man in black and having him, uh, you know, make make me something pretty out of it to use because it, it is a really agile feeling blade and it really demonstrates uh, to me something that I haven't seen a lot from Rick. Rick usually makes at least the blades again that I've I've seen of his are pretty stout, pretty robust cutting, you know, pretty pretty well formed blade. They usually have a lot of material. Rick's a big guy and he makes makes a big sword. This, on the other hand, is one pound, nine ounce, as it sits in my hand right now. It'll be a little heavier when it's finished up, uh, but it's it's really light and nimble and and just just incredibly agile. It's a very comfortable blade to move around and really quite a, quite a treat to hold. Um, and it's just, it, I guess, shows the range of capability of Rick when he was making swords more. There's a lot of features as well to show about the sword. Before I do, I'll talk a little bit about the Saya. This is an octagonal Saya, and I don't know, it's a Shira Saya as well, meant for storage or uh, just kind of general, general storage or maintaining the blade for long periods of time. Uh, whatever. I don't need to get into what a Shirasai is. Uh, what I will say is it's octagonal. The planes on it are nice and smooth and well formed. There are some grains that are visible in the wood and I supposedly, or I guess I've heard that Shirasai ideally is pretty characterless, uh, though I don't know what necessarily makes a good Shirasai. And if you do, go ahead and throw it in the commentary down below. I've heard that the wood should not really show the grain structure and that there shouldn't be any knots or really any character in the wood. And it's made of magnolia and supposed to be, you know, pretty pretty plain looking, I guess, in its ideal form, though I don't I don't know the truth of that. Uh, this has a, a makugi that's made out of uh, horn, and the seam lines up really well. It's got a nice little wasted shape, but really there's not not much to talk about as it relates to the Saya. The other thing I'll note is it has a it has a habaki on it. It's a little bit long. It's almost like an inch and a half long, which makes the blade, I guess, feel longer than it is at 27 and a, and a quarter inches. Uh, but really the pretty stuff to talk about is in this actual blade here and first off if you know the blade has this really long three and a quarter well three and three quarter inch uh, okasaki it's very big and very very pretty it also has kind of a narrow point on it, it it's it's a little bit more slender than the average blade I've, I've seen from Rick. A little bit more elegant uh, feeling. In any case, the Okasaki is just so pretty. I really, I really love this shape. Rick does such a great job with them, and this is one great example of Rick's Okasaki work. Uh, the other thing to note, though, is that this geometry kind of flares out. You can maybe see that along this this mune, it uh, it all of a sudden comes to the Kasaki and then swells out a little bit and you know, I suppose that strengthens the tip and there's all sorts of reasons for it. Uh, in practice, what it does is it makes the sword have a really nice sound as it moves through the air. But all of those features, uh, well, beautiful and nice and would make me love the blade by itself. The thing that really gets me is just the workmanship that Rick has done on this blade and the polish that has brought that workmanship out. Now, I don't know who polished this blade. I suspect it's Ted Tennold, but I'm not 100% sure. Um, I suppose I could be less lazy than I am and actually just go ask. But the workmanship on this polish really shows the workmanship that Rick put into this blade and it is absolutely stunning. There is a beautiful Hata to, to be seen here. Um, it's very, very pretty looking. There's a lot of activity, and the blade is, is polished in such a way where it almost almost just looks like it's wet. It's, it's absolutely, absolutely stunning looking, and I, I can get lost in it for a long time. The other thing that I want to note is that this blade just doesn't show... There's no kind of pockets or inclusions or 
open welds or imperfections where the, the weld maybe just didn't take in this one little tiny spot or where some of the metal burned off or um, it's difficult to explain be, without kind of demeaning other smiths but I've, I've had a lot of other swords that are folded. I've been very fortunate to have custom notable swordsmiths uh, have have own products from them that are along the variety of folded pieces, which are more laborious and expensive. And I often see that there are little bits where the weld doesn't take little minor imperfections in the surface of the steel, which certainly don't do anything major to the blade in terms of its performance, uh, but are unsightly and less than perfect. And I don't see that in this blade from Rick. Uh, it's a second folded piece or third folded piece I've had from Rick, and it's and all of them have been characteristically flawless in that regard where the surface of the steel has really no imperfections pockets open welds anything like that and it's not to say that any of those things are gonna make make a blade bad or or not worth buying or terrible or anything like that but it's certainly nice to see when they are when they are just flawless like this one is and the polish is is absolutely beautiful it's clean and smooth and flat and wonderful and crisp and Everything that you would hope for out of a polish is just absolutely stunning to look at and see. And I hope, I hope that the sword porn has been interesting for you. In any case, uh, that's really about all I have. It's just such a pretty blade and such a pretty hamon. I thought I would share it. Uh, I had it out for cleaning and and use the opportunity to make a video. Anyway, if you have any questions about the sword, throw it in the commentary down below. I believe this is made from Rick Barrett's Orishigami steel. I forgot to mention that. That's a homemade type of steel, though I don't exactly know what Rick uses rather than any other predefined. I believe he made the steel and then pounded the sword out of it. Uh, but that's the only other detail that I can say I really know for sure. If you happen to know anything else, throw it in the commentary down below. If you think I missed anything, let me know. And as always, cheers and thanks for watching.